Okay, this is then the food test required practical. Right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through five very, very simple methods. The first one will be preparing the sample. Starch, sugar, proteins, and then lipids, which is then your fats. Right, now often what they'll do is, and what people will forget to actually talk about in one of these um, uh, food test practicals, is preparing the sample in the first place. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to get some of the food sample into a mortar and pestle, right? This here is a mortar and pestle, right? And what you do is you grind it up with a bit of distilled water. Uh, and the idea of that then is to kind of extract all the kind of different parts of the food, the proteins and the sugars out of it. Then what you do is you filter it. Okay, so when you then filter it, what you're doing is you're taking out the chunky bits from the food and you're getting a nice solution at the end, right? The filtrate which you can then use, which is then going to give you a better result. All right, so if they talk about the food sample at all, you will then talk about exactly how you prepare it. So the first test is then your iodine test for starch. Okay, now iodine is a stain. If you get it on your shirt, it'll make it go black. If you get it on paper towels, if you get it on the desk, it'll stain stuff. Right, so best way of doing this is, what you can do is you put a piece of food sample into one of the little dimples there like that. Okay, this is then called a spotting tile. When you've got your food sample into one of those, or you could put some in there and put some in there, right? Then what you do is you add a couple of drops of your iodine. And iodine is kind of like an orangey brown, okay? It's like an orangey, orangey brown color, okay, when it first starts off. If there is starch present, what it does is it goes blue black, all right? So it kind of goes that color there. All right, now it always looks black to me, right? But if the syllabus says blue black, you write down blue black, okay? And if it does go blue black, then there is obviously starch present. The next one is then the Benedict's test. Now, the most important thing about the Benedict's test, right, is the fact that it's got a variety of different colors that come out of it, right? And you also heat it. So what you do is you get a test tube and you put your food into the bottom of the test tube. Then add a few drops of Benedict solution. I'm now going to do it as blue because that's the color of the Benedict solution. Right? You put a few drops of Benedict solution into it and give it a good shake. Then what you do is you put it into, let's do it purple, a water bath. Okay, and you have that water bath at 80 degrees C. You don't directly put it over a Bunsen burner because it will just boil it too quickly. You put it in a water bath to try and keep it at the correct temperature for a long period of time and you do it for five minutes, okay? Then what you'll do is you'll see a color change, right? Now, I can never ever ever remember, right, the different color changes. I can remember it started at blue, and I can remember it ended up brick red, right? But the colors in between, I couldn't remember, right? Until one day it dawned on me, if I go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, think about the colors of the rainbow, Right, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. It's the colors of the rainbow backwards. Right, Roy G, and I could put indigo, violet there, Roy G, Biv. And what it means is brick red is where there's a lot of sugar. Blue means there's no sugar. And the orange, the yellow, and the green in between is kind of a variance on the amount of sugar that's present. Test for protein. Okay, so protein. Put some food sample into a test tube. Okay, so let's put some food sample in. What color should we have a food sample? Let's have some green food in the bottom. There's some green food in the bottom. All right, and add one centimeter cubed of Biorette A and one centimeter cubed of Biorette solution B. Right, so you've got an A and a B. Sometimes it'll be combined together, right, but often it'll be two different solutions. Give it a quick shake. Any color change, record it in a results table. So the positive color change is it kind of goes a lilac purple color. And if it does go that, then what you do is you then got a positive reaction. All right, remember it starts at blue, similar to the Benedict's, and then it goes to purple. Right, test for lipids, right? So test for fats. There's kind of like three different methods for this. All right, so put some food sample into a test tube. Okay, so there's our test tube. Add a few drops of distilled water, add a few drops of ethanol, right, which is this kind of stage here. 
if it goes milky white, so this sort of bit at the top here, if you get like a milky white precipitate, right, then that means there's fats present. Number two is rub the food on a piece of brown paper. If it comes transparent, like that, that means there's fat present, right? Think about your chippy, right? When you go home from the chip shop, right, what you got is you kind of got that paper that they kind of keep it in. It's kind of gone a bit sort of see-through-y. That means there's fat present. The last one is Sudan 3 goes positive, it goes red. It's unusual for Sudan 3 to ever be mentioned these days because it's highly toxic. What it does is it starts off as like a, a clear, transparent liquid. If there's fat present, it goes a very, very bright red colour. Right, so they are then the kind of four food tests and how to prepare a sample. You need to know the methods, okay, but you also need to know a positive result. All right, so you need to know the colours. Because what they might do is they might say they've got a food sample uh, and it goes purple, right, when you've tested it for something. Right, and what you've got to do then is you've got to know that they're talking about proteins. So you need to know all those, right, and you need to know, most importantly, what it starts at, the colour, and what it ends at, which is then your final result.